So let me start um, with this uh, first slide. This is the uh, name of the program. It's called the Bachelor's Program in Global Issues. <clears throat> and you might be wondering, what is a global issue? It's basically any problem that doesn't have any border control. So you cannot put this issue within some um, region or anything. It just goes beyond our borders. It doesn't care about your political affiliation or your religious beliefs. For example, a good example of that is a recent pandemic we had with COVID-19. It doesn't matter if you are rich or poor or if you are Catholic or, or Muslim. Things like uh, hunger, climate crisis, um, discrimination, war are all um, examples of global issues. A good example for that framework is uh, SDGs. Maybe you have heard about them on the news. This is a kind of sustainable approach that we're taking. And what is the purpose? The idea at the beginning is to give you a general perspective on global issues and later on develop that into more specific points of interest that you may have in order to create, to give you the possibility to make good decisions in the modern um, environmental work. So what are the topics that we cover? We are dividing the topics into two components. One is uh, the environmental aspects, things like uh, earth environment, environmental sciences, but also recent security issues. And on the human side, we have things like health and well-being, but also social diversity and inclusiveness. The main strong point of the program is that it's a PBL program. That means it's a project-based learning. So instead of just you just listening to one professor offloading a lot of information in a one-way approach, what we give you is a problem that you have to solve through the lectures. And in that way, you will have a hands-on approach on how to actually implement solutions. And the other great point that it has is that it's interdisciplinary. So that means you can all only tackle one issue from one perspective. You will need to gain many points of view in order to solve it. This is basically the four years uh, schedule that you will follow. During the first year is very general. So you will learn foundational subjects, things like uh, physical education, language, Japanese, art, um, that you share with other students from the university, not only our program. And during that first year, you will also have the chance to go to the International Christian University. Uh, well, you will have the chance to be in a more international environment in that university that is one of the most famous for liberal arts. Um, it's, it's really like being overseas because all the students and all the professors speak very good English. And also the, the lectures are completely um, in English. So it will be a great opportunity to, to feel like studying abroad. Uh, during the second year, but especially leading to the third year, everything will become more specialized, uh, developing your own interests. So for example, if you're interested in, in physical sciences or uh, in discrimination issues, this is where the point where you will start to develop more detail and particular fields of studies. Leading all up to the fourth year where you will need to decide if you're going to do um, an internship or write a graduation thesis. So this is a good program for that sense because it gives you the chance to either write a thesis or just to do an internship. I will give you a little more details about it later. Um, the university also has a tutorial system. That means the faculty will be giving you um, consultancy and uh, advisory all from your first year all the way until graduation. Later on during your second and third year on top of the coordinator, you will have a mentor and an advisor. And in the end, these three people will uh, guide you all the way to your graduation. This is what you're looking at there is a, a field work. Our students go to a nearby city that unfortunately suffer a disaster, a flooding uh, because of a river overflowing. A few years back, they go there to learn about flood and disaster prevention. And what is good about that uh, field work experience is that they, they don't only get the lectures from the experts on that field, but actually during the course and leading to the end of that project, they themselves needs to uh, come out with a, a possible solution in order to avoid these kind of disasters or prevent them, not only in this particular city, but it could be applicable to other settings. So for example, now on the screen, you can see the students themselves 
um, presenting what could be the possible responses and how to improve the system. And of course, they get feedback actually for, for the, from the public servants there as well. Now we are seeing at uh, GIS, that is a science information uh, technique, and also data analysis on how to um, use data science. Now that uh, artificial intelligence is all over the news, <clears throat> you will be uh, also learning about data science and how to use it in order to solve global issues. As I mentioned before, you can decide to write a thesis or do an internship. We had people actually accepted in the United Nations in other uh, companies. You can choose a company in your home country if you're coming from overseas or basically any country that you're interested on. Uh, we had just a student going into an architectural office uh, here in Tokyo. So the possibilities are endless. Now, if you decide to do a, a thesis, you will need to write a thesis and the topic could be on any topic. It could be education, uh, physics or mental health, um, civil war, peace studies and so on. Really the topic, as long as it is a global issue is, is, is good for our program. Um, now going back to after graduation, so what can you do after you graduate? Um, and this is a really important question. So what kind of employment you can get? Um, there are three main paths. Uh, the first one being, if you decide to work in a global company as an analyst or an environmental uh, consultant or a medical and health related officer, food industry, risk management, all those are possibilities, depending on the expertise that you're going to gain here. You can also decide to, if you're interested in to go into an international organization, for example, working for the United Nations or bilateral, multilateral organizations. But a very popular choice for all students is actually to go to a graduate school in today's labor market, also getting a master degree is very important uh, to keep yourself competitive. So a lot of people, many people decide to get them their masters Many people actually decide to do it here because they like the university, but we had other students in the past going to uh, University of Sydney, University College London, other people going to um, uh, San Diego, UC San Diego, and other people actually have gone um, to work on private sector. So it's really up to you what kind of work you can get. Now going into more uh, practical aspects of your stay here, let me let me tell you about the accommodations or your housing options. The one they're going to present to you is one of them, the preferred one is called the Global Village. Because it's fairly new, the facilities are quite nice, only for $280. And you can, you can even get cheaper options for half or one third of that price, uh, but they're not as new. Now, of course, you can go over this budget and uh, get yourself a, a bigger, nicer place outside the university. But inside the university, this one is very good. It has a, you will have an individual room, but also other facilities like very, very close nearby. You have a supermarket and also a coffee shop, which is a very good option. If you decide to cycle a little further, you can go to um, the, the city center, or you can take the bus there, or you have also very lively options. This is also very important, the financial or economic aspects. I mentioned that the accommodation is about $280. You can get them cheaper if you want to. But talking about the tuition, I would say this is one of the, in Japan, this is probably one of the most affordable options because we are a national university. That means, um, the prices is probably at the university level, one of the best, um, especially coming from a top 10 university. If you think of, for example, a lesser ranked university in the private sector, it will cost four times higher than our tuition. Or even if you compare it to the Europe, to England or to the US, where it can go up to 10 times um, higher. So, our universe is, is, is very convenient in that sense. So this is an information that usually is very attractive to, to parents or to students that are thinking about funding themselves. Uh, now we have a general track that is a usual way of applicating, but also when you're applying, you can decide to also apply to the Japanese uh, government MEX scholarship given by the Ministry of Education. 
this is even though the name is the same, this is not the mix scholarship that the embassies or your consular offices provide in your home countries. This is the one that our program uh, can provide to you. We we have three um, scholarships to give to the top three successful applicants that choose to apply to that. Uh, and because we don't have a very large number of accepted students. So if you are accepted and you apply to that option, to the MEC scholarship, you have a high chances of, of getting it. So it's a very good option. So who can apply in general to BPGI? This is a summary of the application guidelines. Of course, you can visit our website. I will give it to you later on. But basically 12 years of curriculum uh, and school education in your own country, if it is outside Japan. Or persons who have hall or respected to hall international baccalaureate or abitur or GCE. Um, if you are in a school that is not in English, then you will need to provide also your English proficiency level by taking either TOEFL, TOEIC, or ELs, TS. And Japanese students can also apply to BPGI using the general track. This is something quite unique, especially for the other programs in our university. So who can apply to the MEC scholarship in case you decide to apply to that in to on top of the general track? Well, Jesus, there are some specific requirements, so please check them out. Um, especially check that the, your country of your home country has diplomatic relations. This is a description of the money you get for allowance, for traveling costs, for tuition. Basically, it's a very complete um, scholarship. So please check the the QR codes there by taking a picture of that um, image or by checking it with your phone QR code reader. So uh, how to apply? Well, I could give you some details, but of course it would be better if you can go into the our website for the details um, and you can get a more updated view on it. Now, this is also important, as it was mentioned before by Imoto-san, um, this week, March 1st, Friday, Japan time, we are starting the, the reception of the document. So if you are planning to um, do it, please send them it's, it's, uh, starting March 1st and finalizing the procedures on March 22nd. So you have that window to send your documentation. It is not that far away. So I encourage you to prepare the documentation as soon as possible. And after that, uh, these are the main milestones. So basically, if you are successful with the first stage, you will know by April 19. And the second stage will take place around mid-May. And if everything goes well, you will know around or exactly on May 22nd. And from there, you will start the enrollment procedures to eventually start your lectures on October 1st, okay? So these are the, some of the pictures that the, I would like to show you for the uh, field work that the students usually take. Um, this is about environmental sciences. Um, and this is about the, the one I was describing before on how to prevent disasters. And you can get more information if you go to our website. This is the final slide. So if you want to take a picture of this QR code or go to um, bpgi.scuba.ac.jp. You can access more information on the application procedure, the different uh, and more detailed guidelines on how to provide the documentation.